Well, hello everyone. Uh, welcome to today's session. Uh, the topic that we have today for you is uh, survey, CAD, and GIS data flow. So a couple of things first, before we begin, we're gonna be recording this. Uh, it will be posted in our YouTube channel, probably within 48 hours. So feel free to join our channel and, and uh, search for this video. So let's talk about our presenters today. First, my name is Said Lama. I'm the professional services consultant at Talica. And today with me is Richard Johnson. Richard has over 20 years of experience in CAD GIS systems. He, had, he was the system manager for CAD and GIS to the city of Vancouver and an analyst for the BC provincial government. While working in Cancel in Solicat, Richard has implemented a diverse number of CAD and GIS systems with a variety of clients in the infrastructure world. Uh, also today with me is Matt Colver. Matt has a bit over 25 years of experience in civil engineering and consulting. Atolicas is one of the technical consultants for civil infrastructure and GIS with a focus on the Autodesk infrastructure products. So let's talk about the agenda. Um, so for today, we have uh, this agenda for you. Uh, first, we're gonna begin with survey, the beginning and the end of the data flow loop. Then we're gonna move forward with survey data for design and stakeout. And we're gonna kind of finalize with survey, CAD, and GIS integration. At the end, we're gonna have a Q&A session. So we will love to hear from you. So please use the Q&A panel to post your questions. And with that, I think it's time to get the action going. Thanks, Aid. So we want to move through this relatively quickly. And uh, we are primarily dealing with problems between data integration, between survey, CAD design, and data management systems. Uh, we deal with a lot of clients where uh, historically and currently, this is a manual process. It's disconnected. And there is a, a large amount of data loss between these disparate systems, both upstream and downstream. This is, it's no longer the case that these systems are not, cannot be automated, cannot be synchronized and cannot be connected. So data collection in the field through to GIS databases, both ArcGIS, SQL Server, uh, whichever flavor that you decide you wanna use. Um, and then output of course, to the entire suite of Autodesk uh, products and platform. Uh, SolidCAD has created an entire system, not just standards, but a completely working data pickup, data collection, QCQA style sheet, uh, Civil 3D uh, template integration, uh, Esri database integration that all sits on top of an Autodesk BIM 360 uh, construction cloud platform and uses safe software and FME to be able to convert that into multiple output formats for multiple clients so that you only ever have to use one set of description keys, one set of templates uh, to deliver to all of your clients. After this session, we're gonna do a Q&A session. So please uh, stick around for that. We've recorded everything, but we do have everything working locally on our machines if anybody wants to see anything in this session. Starting with ArcGIS portal, we navigate to the web map that shows our survey field data. You can see the attributes of the survey field data in the web map. Switching to ArcMap, which is ArcGIS desktop, you see the data again with a different view. Note that the attributes are still the same when viewed through portal or through ArcMap. Switching to Civil 3D, we can bring those data layers in in a few different ways. Here it is through the ArcGIS for AutoCAD connector. So we've connected to portal through Civil 3D and are bringing the information in this way. Note that here are all of the attributes intact Again, not stopping there. 
we can bring the data in through the ArcGIS connector for Civil 3D. Here we can create Civil 3D objects directly from the ArcGIS features. Note that in this case, we're focusing on the survey Kogo points. Now there are some limitations with this method. We'll talk about that a little bit later. A fourth method is to bring in the information using the Autodesk ArcGIS connector for FDO or Map3D. This will bring the features in as a map layer, not as Civil 3D Cobalt points. This has its uses as well. Here are the attributes again intact using this method for bringing the information in. Switching gears from a survey perspective, we want to use Trimble Business Center to bring the information in from our ARC Enterprise Geodatabase. Here we are using the Geodatabase connection to read the features in from the Enterprise Geodatabase. Before we survey with information, we want to use the schema for that database to create a template for the surveyor to be able to pick up the data in such a way that it is compatible with updating the GIS. Note that the GIS features that we chose to create the template from have all of the same attributes again that we've been looking at through all of these systems. Now we're going to read the data in from the ArcGIS database in order to provide the data to the surveyor along with the template we've just created. So now that this data has been read in, we can select a portion of the GIS database to be provided to the surveyor along with the template. We're going to choose to send this data to the surveyor directly in the field using the Trimble Sync Manager. Here we are updating our job list so that the surveyor can now open it inside of Trimble Access in the field. Here he is, as simulation, downloading in the field the information that we just provided. So note that we can now begin our survey. Surveyor walks to the location where he wants to pick up the information. We measure that point and we want to store it in our data collector. Now, all of the attributes that were in the GIS database, including the feature class, which we're collecting now, selecting now, When we store that location, all of the attributes are available to be filled in.
Note that there are options to use list picks or limit values input for updating the GIS database. In this example, these options were not Observation used. stored. So here we're storing a second point now, putting in different attributes, and saving them to the total station or GPS. When we're finished our survey, we're now able to upload our finished job back to the office for use in quality control and of course, update the GIS. So now we can import the field, the, the field data that was sent to us and add it to our project. There are the two points that were picked up in the field. We can now write those two new points to the GIS database. So now these features will be written to the GIS. See the report when we go to ArcMap now, when we look at those features, you can see that they have now been added to the GIS database. When we want to read that information into Civil 3D, we can use the similar methods to do it. We could create COGL points using the Civil 3D ArcGIS connector, however, these do not recognize the descriptions. So for now, we're using the FDO data connection to be able to export the information to a CSV file to be re-imported using the normal means. Now you can see that the easting, northing, elevation description information is exported so that the designer or the other surveyor can use it downstream and re-import. Once the surveyor exports the files from TBC, we can now use them in Civil 3D. I'll begin with the text file, the survey points file. And there they are. Now one thing I like to do is I like to turn on the maps just to make sure everything's in the right place where I think it's supposed to be. And it would appear that we're in the right place. We don't need the map anymore. So the points are here. Now, description keys that we've developed essentially map the surveyor's raw description into a symbol. Right? There is a manhole, for example. There's a benchmark. Could be valves, could be trees, and speaking of trees, I have some trees here. So the surveyor shoots some trees, maybe uses a description of, well, tree, and Civil 3D applies the appropriate style based on the surveyor's raw code. This is called description key matching. So where did the type, the spread, the trunk, and the height come from? Inside Civil 3D, we call those user-defined properties. The surveyor provides us with the normal information, which is simply this, point number, easting, northing, elevation, description, but also additional information, such as surface information, or attribute 1, or attribute 2. And so this is what their file looks like when I open up in Excel. There's the normal five bits of information we have. And then the rest, starting with yes or true, we have additional information. So the type of tree is oak. Its spread is this much. Its trunk diameter is that much, etc. So the surveyor's text file, when exported from TBC, contains this information within the comma-separated file. And our system is able to read that, and we've developed some label styles to be able to display that as well. Now, that may not be enough. 
our system has been designed so that when a surveyor shoots, for example, a tree survey point, they're prompted to enter several attributes about that tree, type, spread, trunk, height, etc. So they might shoot a tree, use tree as the description, and the type is maybe white pine or oak or cherry. So we've developed a small application that can be run to do just that. Let me run it for us. So what the application does is it looks for all of the survey points that have attribute information and it matches the user defined attribute, in this case white pine, with a style of that same name. Uh, now it's surface time. Okay, the surveyors export two files from TBC, a point file and a DWG or a DXF. And so I have the DWG called survey line work, which I will just insert as a block into AutoCAD. So when we go to create a surface, we can just use that line work as break lines. Now, speaking of the surface, there are two surfaces that come with our standard. One is called existing ground attribute and one is called existing ground description. But because we're using user defined attributes, this actually is, is even easier. See, when the surveyor shoots the survey point, there's an attribute in there that says include in surface or not. Let me open up that file again. All right, here's the surveyor's file. This sixth column is that attribute. You know, include in surface or not, yes or no, or true or false. And so in Civil 3D, this point group uses that attribute. So only points who have, in this case, yes, as the value for that attribute, are part of this point group. And this surface already includes that point group. So really, the workflow is import points, update your point groups, and rebuild your surfaces, and you just have a surface. You don't actually have to make the surface yourself. So let me do break lines. Our standard also has several layer filters to make it easy to navigate all the layers that come with it. So I only want to define the break lines that should be defined as break lines. So what I can do is I can use this layer filter and isolate the group of layers. And there they are. The underground, the overhead layers have been turned off and now I can just simply define these all together as break lines for my surface. There we are. And I'll just turn those previous layers back on. We are essentially ready to start designing now. Another interface element we've decided to include with our software system are some tool palettes. Uh, and there are several. This one, well, these, these several are called uh, workflow tool palettes. This one's called Surface. And it has these tools and it has these. And really all these are are civil 3D commands except they're just run from a tool palette. Right? I could go to home and create a surface this way or I can go to the tool palette and create a surface this way. And why do we do this? Well we try to organize it in the order that surveyors and designers would typically use them. Import points first from the drawing or to a database. Make a point group um, Styles by attributes, that's the app that I showed you earlier. Create a surface, add point groups, define break lines. These are very typical commands that you'd run, and we've organized them uh, from top to down in the typical order that you might run them. There's one for surfaces, there's one for corridors, which is alignments, profiles, assemblies, and corridors. There's a workflow tool palette for grading. There's one for pipes. Uh, and there's one for production. Other tool palettes we've included are for drawing typical AutoCAD entities. So for example, existing utilities. If it's your turn to draw cable TV, well, if you're 
trying to maintain a drafting standard, you need to remember what layer things go on. So here, the layer is already embedded into this tool. I'm going to draw a line. It's already going to go on the proper layer. Whatever the cable TV layer is, there it is. Uh, there's mtext, multiliters, and blocks as well. When I insert a block from that tool, the appropriate block gets inserted and it gets placed on the proper layer as well. So this kind of tool palette is very handy to help you maintain your drafting standards. You really don't need to refer back to that big thick drafting manual in order to get things on the proper layer. Now you might think, okay, well I want to draw some tell, but I don't just want to draw a line. Well, that's fine. This one tool is able to draw polylines and arcs and circles and things. So we have our existing conditions met. We've drawn some AutoCAD entities with our tool palettes. It's now time to design our road. Um, corridor is the object you need. Now to create a corridor, of course, I need an assembly. And you could create one from scratch using the out-of-the-box Civil 3D tool. Uh, you would need to use the out-of-the-box tool palettes as well. Uh, but we've also included some assemblies for us. Now, do these meet your needs in every situation? Likely not. But these assemblies that we're including have some content that's actually going to make it easier for the surveyor when it comes time to lay out. So let me make it. Corridor. Alright, there's our corridor. So all those yellow lines, feature lines, have meaningful codes which come from the assemblies that are packaged with our standard. And so these little triangles that you see, those are the special codes that we've developed with this assembly. This is what makes the surveyor's job a little bit easier later. All right, there's all my surfaces defined. Lastly, I need to define boundaries. And there are, all of our boundaries have now been defined. Rebuild the corridor, and there's all of our surfaces. And there they are. The red is the sub base, the yellow is the curb, the magenta is the sidewalk, the blue is the topsoil. And so when exported, the surveyor can use these uh, for layout quite easily. And now for export to the surveyor. If you're a Trimble user, you're in luck. Trimble makes an add on for a Civil 3D called Trimble Link. So I'm going to export a surface for our Trimble hardware. Pick the surface and export it to a file. That can now be used by the surveyor for layout, but that's just the surface. I've got a road here as well, so I'll export a road. Now, by the way, the export surface creates a TTM file, a Trimble terrain model. The export road creates an RXL file. So I'll export the road, I'll choose the corridor, and I'll choose the appropriate surface I need. Whether or not there are side slopes, then I'll choose to export it to a file. Give it to the surveyor, they now have something they can lay out. Next, let's draw some existing underground utilities. So I don't want to use polylines because they can't be projected into cross-section properly. So we've created some existing pressure networks. I'll just draw some cable TV. New pipe run. Choose an appropriate size. The right depth. And then at this point, we just draw the thing just like you're drawing a polyline. But it's not a polyline, it's an actual pipe, which can be projected into profile and cross-section. And to show it in profile, really, is just a matter of selecting it and choosing to draw in profile. And there it is. Design water mains are exactly the same. Create a new pipe run, draw the objects in plan, project them. They come into the plan, they come into the profile on the proper layer with the proper styles. 
gravity pipes are exactly the same. We've included some pipe networks into our standard. So for example, I'll create some proposed storm pipes. Edit the network, choose a manhole, and choose the size, and choose the draw structures and pipes. The right size, the right layer, the right label styles. Projecting them to the profile is done the exactly the same way as I showed you with the cable TV. Exporting the pipe network for survey layout is easy with the new Project Explorer. I'll choose the proposed storm network. We have three manholes and two pipes. Now the deal is, you choose which columns you'd like to export to, let's say, a CSV file for the surveyor. Once you've chosen them, then I right-click that network and I do a quick report to a file. That creates the CSV, send it to the surveyor, now your pipes can be laid out. Once you're ready to begin creating your construction documentation, uh, consider the use of sheet sets. Here's my plan and profile sheet in paper space. Uh, I've created a new sheet set from our template and currently I have not yet attached this paper space layout to the sheet set. Um, the minute I do so, these fields will automatically populate themselves with the values that I've pre-populated in the sheet set. Yes, thank you. Import checked. It's now part of the sheet set. All I need to do is regen and all of the values populate themselves. That's the benefit of using the sheet set manager. And that's essentially our software system. Enjoy. Now to close the loop for stakeout, the files that Matt exported are then brought into our Trimble Business Center project. And we're able to provide that to the surveyor in the field as a complete object. Notice that we don't have to provide the entire road corridor to the surveyor. We provide it to him in the order that he would do the stakeout based on the construction job. We've uploaded the job, and now the surveyor can open it up inside of his survey equipment in Trimble Access. Now we can open up the object we were just looking at. There's our sub base ready to be staked out. We can view it in three dimensions. And we're able to put the backdrop of the GIS data in as a web map service to see the underlying context. all right on the surveyor's total station or GPS. Great, well, thanks very much, everyone. Um, I hope you found that interesting. We can switch to the uh, Q&A session very quickly. We don't have a lot of time, but note that uh, after this uh, webinar ends, we will continue on and try to answer um, as many of your questions as possible. If there are any questions that you think of after today or after this webinar, uh, please send uh, Saeed an email and he'll be able to uh, contact us if required to answer your question. Great. That's a great point, Matt.
Okay, well, that concludes uh, our session for today. Please uh, feel free to email um, Saeed with your questions and we'll get those answered uh, as soon as we can. Thanks very much for attending, everyone. Thank you, Richard. Thank you, Matt. Fantastic session. Thanks, everyone, for attending. I hope you have a great rest of the week. Um, again, my email is saeed.lama at salika.ca. Any questions, any suggestions, please feel free to reach out. Have a fantastic afternoon.